All right, so we're going to go over the basics of using Apollo.io and their database. Be very clear that this is just going to be a demo of their database. They have an engagement product. They have a playbook product or something like that. I don't use any of those things. So uh, this whole video is just going to be about the, the database and querying the database. Like I've said in other videos, mainly what we do in my agency is we're using Apollo.io, bringing that data to Clay, and then sending the, the emails out. Um, from there. And so um, Apollo is that first step on our workflow. And it's because, honestly, it's because of their coverage. Like if you just look at their people coverage, they've got 272 million people, which, you know, like who knows how they kind of get that to that number, but it's just really great coverage. And then their company coverage is really large as well. You also see that there's a lot of workflows that we use that are really important to um, us. Um, specifically around like one, like one problem we had with other data providers is like, every time I save a credit, it's added to this saved list over here. Um, other providers wouldn't give us access to those saved things that we'd have to keep reusing credits. And now I know it tells me that like 10% of these people, over 10% of these people have new job changes. Um, and I get that, but I'm cool with that. And, uh, like we could just keep using credits over here. And so... Um, first we'll go over company filtering and then we'll talk about people filtering. And so basically you have your high level stuff. The most important filter that I found inside of Apollo that has been super helpful for us is in the company tab right here. If you hit company filter, open that up hidden inside of here is this include exclude list of companies. You can take an account list and put this in here and it'll only search for companies that match those websites. So if I put apple.com and then hit save search, now we've got Apple, iTunes, Xcode, you know, Apple's large enough that, that that's what's going to happen. But if I put in like clay.run or clay.com, whichever one they're actually, I wonder which one they have. Yeah. So great. And so clay.com comes up here with all of this information, right? And so what you can do is you can take a list from another place where you built your account list. Like imagine you build your account list in Crunchbase and their contact data is okay in Crunchbase. You build your list in Crunchbase, you bring it into Apollo and then you can like get all of the companies in here as well. And so that's the first thing that I love to show people inside of Apollo. Account HQ location, super, super easy. Number of employees, industry and keywords. This is the one that we play with most often. I'll be showing you later how we do like a, call it like a poor man's lookalike audience search um, by using the company keywords. Their filters are pretty much the same as what you get from public LinkedIn data. Buying intent, we've played with this a little bit. It's nothing crazy, but you they have a buying intent platform. The buying intent platform on the back end is called Lead Sift, if you ever wanted to just look at their data um, alone. Their technology data, I've actually found, so I've been told by the Apollo team that the technology data backing Apollo is built with data. And, and I've run these tests where if I were to build a list of Shopify stores using built with, and then um, pull the list of all the Shopify stores with like 10 to hundred employees, right? Download that list, upload that list of domains into Apollo and then filter down by the industries that matter because like Biden for America has a Shopify store. The New York times is a Shopify store. Um, and, and we don't want to contact those people. Right. And so then when we filtered down for industries that made sense, we got like 5,000 contacts, whatever it was. And then when we just used the technology filter inside of Apollo, and then we just put Shopify and then used all of the same filters. Whoops. Yeah. See, once we use the technology filter inside of Shopify, I mean, inside of Apollo and then filtered the industries that mattered, it was basically the same list as well. And so I know there's 470,000 companies inside of Apollo that qualify for using Shopify. And there's like 9 million or 5 million, I forget what it is, um, on built with. A lot of those companies are companies that just launch a website and they set up, there's some people who have 30 Shopify stores just by themselves. So it's not like you're gonna be able to find different contact information for, for all of them. And it might not even be public. They might not release that. They might, might not announce it on LinkedIn. And so um, you're not gonna be able to get their contact information. So if you don't have access to built with, oftentimes Apollo is just good enough. Revenue is okay. Um, my big thing with revenue is if you ever want to be thinking about revenue, just worry about employee headcount. The, the big thing is, you know, see how they have 65,000 public companies. I'm sure the revenue for that is pretty dang accurate because they release it publicly. 
But for the private companies, how would they know? How do they know what the revenue is on these these private companies? And so um, anytime a, a customer comes to us and they're like, oh, I want to target companies making 10 to $50 million in revenue, we, we just say like, what's the employee headcount of companies you've worked with in the past? Because that revenue size is it, 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 like, even if we did search by it, it's not going to be accurate. So let's just skip it. Funding, um, to my understanding, and if somebody corrects me, I can change it. Um, Apollo.io's funding information is from uh, Crunchbase. So again, if you don't want to pay for Crunchbase and Apollo, you can combine all of them uh, in here. Job postings. My biggest problem with the job postings in Apollo is one, they only track the top 10. And two, they won't tell you the job posting. So if a company is hiring for 200 employees and they have only the top 10, like, and the first top 10 are all graphic designers, you're not going to know that they're hiring for software engineers. Um, and my other problem is they don't tell you what the, the role is. So if they're hiring for a marketer, it might be head of marketing. It might be like a paid media marketer. You have no clue what it is. So you can't include it in your email. So if we ever use job postings in Apollo, which we never really do, um, we always do it with, um, oh, we'll do a very specific job title. So I'll say like sales development representative. So we're like really, really super specific. Scores is an internal thing they have. Signals is an internal thing that they have. Open up more filters, you get access to a lot more sexy stuff that they're not showing you in the main UI and everybody needs to see this stuff. Some of this stuff is more interesting than, than this main stuff. So employees by department, this is super fun. You can add in a new department and then like look for like how many people do they have on the engineering team? Yeah, like that one's really great. Headcount growth, you can look for ranges in certain timeframes and within departments, which again, very cool for doing your targeting. Um, industry and keywords we talked about already buying intent, sick codes. This is just like, you know, if you're looking for plumbers and you wanted to search by sick codes that like this would be able to help job titles. Oh, if you want, so, so we're in the company's filter right now. So if you wanted to build a list of all Shopify companies that have paid media people on the team. Apollo would be able to do that for you. Funding we talked about. Founded year, just another quick filter. Like if you wanted new companies or if you wanted companies that were founded over 10 years ago. Um, news, this is kind of interesting. You can select a time frame for like leadership changes and acquisitions and all this other stuff. A recognition and some kind of award. The only problem is they're not going to tell you what the award is. So these are all kind of, kind of tough. Um, relational. Identified as competitor of. Interesting. Okay. Anyway. Then we can get into the rest of this. The biggest one I want to show is account CSV import. So um, if you were to take a list of websites and import it into Apollo, if they can match the website, they'll unlock the whole company enrichment for that company for free inside of Apollo. The same thing if you upload a first name, last name, and an email address. Um, and then a LinkedIn profile just makes it better. They'll unlock that whole contact for you in the people. And so... One problem that sometimes we'll have is like finding B2B SaaS companies is tough in Apollo because of the way you do the filtering. They don't really have a great filter for that. And so what we just have in here is like the B2B SaaS companies from Harmonic. And now anytime we need to build a list of B2B SaaS companies, we just hit these account CSV imports. And I know these are 36,000 B2B SaaS companies that we can just pull. And then, yeah, like a Google and Microsoft made it in here. So then I could just be like, okay, I just want the 11 to 20 because for, I mean, there's way more in the one to 10 range. We just didn't upload them. Um, this list was specifically 11 to 200, I think. And then now what we can do is, oh, let's make this just one to 10. So now what we could do is we could go to saved right here, hit select all people, hit find people. And now boom, now we can do a people search, which perfectly brings us into the next part of the video. And so that's one reason I really like Apollo is because we could do that, that filtering in the accounts and then flip it right into a people search. Um, the other thing is the company search and the people search is kind of combined. Like you can do a lot of the same things. You just can't, in a people search, you can't do an account CSV import, which for B2B SaaS, that's why we start that way. And so you could search by job titles, location, employees, industry, and keywords, their email status, which if you, um, you know, Apollo will charge you credits for emails that aren't valid. And so um, 
What I found is we've sent to emails that they claim are verified. And then we've sent to emails that um, were just like guessed. And so when we sent to emails that we didn't clean and it was just from Apollo, we had like a 20% bounce rate. And then when we sent to emails that were verified by Apollo, we had a 6% bounce rate. So if you don't want to waste credits on um, emails and you want it to be super clean, download only the verified emails and then use like a list cleaning tool because 6% is still is still too high. Um, so you could do a lot of the same filtering on the person search. Uh, it just, you know, you got to, you know, you got to play with this depending on what you're, what you're doing here, right? And so uh, what else did I want to show? So um, what we'll do when I say like the poor man's lookalike search, right? Is, so what I mean by a lookalike search is you have 30 customers in the past and you want to find companies that are similar to those 30 companies in the past, right? And so there's a company called Ocean.io that does this really, 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 really well. But they're super, super expensive. And so... The way that you can do this using Apollo.io is what I like to do is I like to just search the company that I've sold in the past and I'll just be like, okay, gone. I'll, I'll open up two tabs for this actually. And then I'll just work on this. So I'll be like, all right, gone. And I say, okay, cool. It's an information technology company. I can't. So what we really need is we need keywords and I can't believe they don't have keywords. They don't have keywords in Apollo. That's kind of crazy. Okay. So they don't have, so let's do another one. Let's do Salesforce, right? So we want companies that look like Salesforce. So we'll come in here and we'll take a look at their keywords and we're like, okay, boom, this is what we're looking for. Whoops. Oh, now it's searching only for that keyword, but I just clicked and I shouldn't have clicked. Now what I'll do is, why won't they give me access to all those keywords? That's so annoying. Yeah, all right. So this is why I open it in two tabs. Because we just do it like this. So now I have the keywords in front of me over here. And then I'll put in the relevant ones over here. So we kind of hover. And we're like customer relationship management, right? Customer relationship manager. CRM, right? All of these keywords for them. Software, depending on what we're searching for, is too broad here, right? We don't want to include that. Information technology might be too, too broad. We want other CRMs, right? So we use this keyword and then we go from there. So now we can look up another keyword. We say HubSpot. And then we just get ideas for what these companies look like. And so then we get the keywords from HubSpot. We say, okay, great. Content marketing automation. Okay, I kind of want that too. So we'll say content marketing automation. Great. And so we could use this keyword section to find all of the companies that would be relevant. And then we can narrow it down with the industries to just make sure that we're really talking to correct companies. And so you eyeball it. And so Louis Vuitton is, is not good, right? So then we would come in here and we'd say exclude keywords, fashion, right? I, I don't know how Louis Vuitton is possibly like, you know, qualifying for that. And then what we could also do is we could also make the industry only industries that are good qualifications. So like information technology and computer software is also going to clean up our list a lot. And so cool. Now we shouldn't have like a crazy like Louis Vuitton. Freshworks, NetSuite, OpenText. Yeah, cool. And so the reason why you get so many of these IBMs is just because like there's so many different business units that get put into Apollo that that's why you're seeing all of these. Make sure you deduplicate it if you're using a lot. Like see how many HubSpots we have over here. It's pretty crazy. And so, um, yeah, anyway. That is like a quick overview of using Apollo. It's a pretty easy, simple to use platform. Um, and this is where a lot of our like main, main list building starts from.